Welcome to the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio, home to the Toledo Rockets. A full house is in store, and so too, a terrific matchup in this one. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see a squad from the back, the Bowling Green Falcons. Taking on the winners of seven straight, the Toledo Rockets. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. And the Rockets will put total leather and will get started. So the Bowling Green Falcons offense takes the field for the first time today. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you've got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. Back to the ground with the running back. Gets it across the 30 to the 31, a pickup of five. Offensive linemen love to run power. Why? You run power, you run power. Then you can play action. You don't want that defense to be sitting there saying, it's a pass, it's a pass, having a pass block. And that ball is picked off. Well, statistically, this defense is not one of the better units against the pass. They're trying to change that here today. What a great job tracking the ball down making a play on it, stabbing it out of the air for a big interception early. That should be massive for their confidence. The Rockets offense has its Got first it. opportunity of the day. As we take a look at our impact players for this one, what are you looking for, Jesse, for a guy to make an impact? Well, these are simply put the leaders of this football team, and generally games go how these guys play. If they make plays, and they've got a shot to win this one. No doubt, they got to show up. These are the team leaders. These guys have to play well if they're going to win the football. Down to the 12-yard line, it's first down. Jet sweep to the receiver. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And I think in today's era of college football, we get enamored with the jet sweep. It's exciting. You're getting this wide receiver involved in a run game. But sometimes it's just better to go old school and just run the football convention. And a good job in coverage there. They stop it after just a few. You know, sometimes even a short game like that can be used to set up something bigger later on. No doubt, Reese. They can pump that and take a shot down the field. And don't worry. They're going to go back to that same play. because And he'll hold it. Take it to the end zone. Touchdown, Toledo. They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and, and I feel like momentum is always a big thing in any game, but in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. They'll try to add another to their lead. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they finish it off by connecting from 10 yards out. And it'll come out to the 25, no attempt at a return. Bowling Green has it back, and they'll send the offense onto the field. After that last pick, David, they really need to take care of the ball this time. No doubt. it. And, Paul, I want to know what Spurrier said to you on the sideline after a pick. Do that again, and you'll be right here beside me for the rest of the game. <laughs> you got to go out. you got to call your plays. And I hope this coaching staff isn't going to be afraid to throw at this drop. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. Just enough there to get it to the 25, a pickup of two. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got
got to show up and play your best football in games like this. negative sometimes finding a quarterback that's a game manager no use your brain set up good situations I'm, I'm way more successful when i can keep those sticks in a more manageable situation and i'm not as predictable on a third down one man in the backfield and he gets it and how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing they got nothing on the last play at second and ten he's looking to throw Fires to the big fella. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. We had a barn burner the last time these two teams played, and no reason to expect anything else between these two bitter rivals. Attention to detail, and I think the sense of urgency, David, in a game like this just goes away. And I think managing the emotions in these type of games, you, you know last year was a classic. Now you're trying to form this year's identity of this team and go out and get a win in a big-time rival game. The give on the inside. A confident, tough, efficient run gets it up to the 44. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm now. They're letting them drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. Got eight on first down, now looking at a second and two. Leaves it with the back. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. This is an offense that really sees their identity as being able to run the football. Nice job there picking up the first down. The Rockets will have it first and ten. And the freshman does a great job using his technique and getting the man on the ground. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. They'll try the run. And the defense snows him under after a very short game. You know, runs like this oftentimes are like a boxer in a boxing match. Obviously, it's not a knockout punch, but these are body blows. As the game goes on, these small gains are going to turn into longer runs. Breach and tackle, and he's got room. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Just inside the red zone, first and 10 from the 19. Wide out in motion. Receiver going for the edge on the jet sweep. And that's a very productive first down play and bringing up second and three. As they get set to snap it, just about to reach the end of the quarter. To the air, it's Gleason. A little release to the back. They throw it in reverse as that's the final play here in the first period. Guys, that's the end of the quarter and Toledo has the lead. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. Now to see if these guys can get back in the game in the second quarter. A third down play to open up this quarter. From the gun, wants to pass. Catch in the middle, it's Stevens. They get him stopped at the five-yard line, but it will be first and goal from there. And stuff on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. After another clutch third down conversion, it's first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And a decent gain there before the defense makes the stop. Now on second and goal. Tries again to get it in. 
they have Ladani and Tomlinson out there. This group needs to keep building on this lead. They're up by seven over Texas Tech. We'll circle back if anything big happens. You should know. Oh, and how about that? I know Kevin and those guys will be keeping an eye on it for us. He's gonna pass. Finds his man. It's Tillman. He's brought down solid. Pick up a little bit short of the first down. Still some work to do after that last completion at second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Knocked down at the 31 after a game of five. Well, I know this is an offensive line that has a ton of pride. They want to come out each and every game and really impose their will on the D line. They got just enough push there on that run play to pick up the first. The big defensive tackles in the middle, they're not always the best pass rushers, but they are strong, and I say country strong. They put their hands on you, you feel it. They lock people out of the line of scrimmage, they create separation, they wrap running backs up, and usually they don't get out of the midst of those big runs. Trying to pick up a first down. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. They'll get him on the ground at the 46, and it'll be a first down. He just went with something very easy, very reliable. Flip it forward, let your receiver do the rest. I only got to get a few yards. Nice job, nice execution. First down. And they'll bring him to the ground after a short game. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job by the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Nice, solid form tackle from this sophomore. Now facing a third and long from the 50-yard line. Looking to throw. It's Bazelak. Fires to the tight end. That'll be enough for the first down as they stop him at the 43-yard line. And the Falcons come to the line with a fresh set of downs. He'll come out throwing on first down. Fires to the tight end. They make the stop after the catch. He's still some work to do to pick up that first down. And this will be the ninth play of the drive. They'll go with a direct snap. The Falcons get enough for the first down. You gotta wonder if that's a moral victory for this offensive line because they have not been running the ball well at all all game long. But on that short yardage situation, they finally pick it up, and maybe that's gonna be the catalyst for them to get this thing going and spark the run game. Well, right away after picking up a first down, they go right back to their playmaker at running back. And I love the push they got up front, getting a hat on a hat, opening a huge hole for the back. And you become so hard to defend when you can run the football successfully on first down. If you're starting like that, now what opens up? Play action. Now you're making me play pass and run. This offense, if they can create that run physicality, now it opens up everything else. And here's the chance to cut into that lead before halftime. First and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And he takes it in for a score. Touchdown, Bowling Green. That's a nice drive, a nice physicality, punching it in with the run game. And here's the thing, I like where this offense is going. Nice job creating some momentum, going into the half, cutting down the lead. This thing could get really exciting. Nice job answering the bell right before the half. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. Fielded in the end zone. It's Lane. 
Gets it out to the 20, about five yards short of where he'd be if he'd just taken a knee in the end zone. The Rockets offense is back on the field. to put something together to answer that last score. There's a lot of pressure, too, on this offense to have to execute at a high level. They've got to score points today, but they can't go too fast because their defense right now is tied. And I think that's the difficulty being a play ball. Like, I have to balance all of those things. My defense is good, but I can't get all the field. But I got to be aggressive because this is a back-and-forth type game, so a lot to process and think about. He's got his man. And they picked up nine on first down. It'll bring up second and short. Hey, and quarterback receiver on the same page. Nice job seeing the zone, understanding the drag route concept. Easy pitch, easy catch. Fires to the big fella. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Really nice job there by the quarterback understanding it's blitz, and not just that it's blitz, but knowing whether it's man coverage or zone coverage behind the blitz. You've still got to know where your answer is going to be based on what the defense is doing in the back end, and you add the answer to the test right now. Just inside the 35, first and 10 from the 34. The aerial assault continues, using the back as a receiver on the screen. No siree, not this time. The defense was there and ready for that one. Love the awareness by the defense here. They're trying to get the running back the ball in space, but the defense was expecting it. They had guys in position, they located the football, and they went in game time. He's off to the races. A huge gain on that one before he ran out of bounds, and he has the first down. There's just so many different places this defense has to have their eyes right now. They have no idea who has the football. Are they running it inside? Is the quarterback keeping it? Or are they giving it to the receiver on the jet sweep? That time, bad eye discipline on defense. Okay, right. And the Rockets are threatening on first and goal. They'll run the quarterback sweep. Wedges, pushes, and he's over and in for the touchdown. It's still early, but we have some no distance being put on the scoreboard right now. You do. It's early, but you got to find something positive. Right now, everything going in the other direction. So how do you respond when you hit the mouth early in this football game? Got to find something positive quick. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point puts them on top 21-7. to seven. So it's an 80-yard drive. And they finish the deal with the quarterback sneak. He'll start the return inside his spot. Good job by the coverage unit to put a stop to that return. Bowling Green has it back. The Falcon offense will go to work. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. Dang right. There's no time to be concerned. We're a little bit down. Listen, I just think this is a point in the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. They make the stop, but the sweet throwing catch is plenty to give them a first down. Just enough time to get off one more snap. Looking downfield, it's Basilak. It's complete to the left. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. That's going to wrap up the first half here, and now we join Kevin with the halftime update. Thanks so much, guys, and I need not tell you Rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion, and no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. And it's been said, football is a game of inches, and guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen in panic. 
But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. First play of the drive comes from the 22. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. That's the kind of play that can really get you going if they get it out to the 36. Line gets set, first down. They're going to ride this running back. They can rely on this guy to pick up solid yardage when they need it, and he's out to the 43. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. The inside handoff. And he's brought to the ground, but not before he gets it out for the first down. The Rockets come to the line with a new set of downs. Quick handoff. And he is swarmed under a host of defenders there to make the stop. Got three on first down in second and seven. Looking for space, it's Stewart. What a good one there. He has enough for the first down. And David, how demoralizing does it have to be for a defense when you know they're going to run it, everyone in the stadium knows they're going to run it, and still you cannot stop? There's nothing more demoralizing as a defensive lineman because it just it ticks you off. It gets in your head. You, you know that guy. And he ran away from the ground, and he'll take it in. Touchdown, Tomino. They've extended the lead and taken control here in week nine. Now they've got a little breathing room. They are in firm control of this game, guys, but you never want to let up in a rivalry game. Because it only takes one play. We know how much of a factor momentum can be in these types of rivalry games, David, so this game's still far from over. And this is where my leadership and my experience comes into play. When you got guys that have been through these fires, been through these rivalry games, you know the swings happen quick. Now you got to swing it back your way. And they knock through the extra point, and they're up 28 to 7. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? Boys, if it's happening in college football, we've got eyes on it. Check this out. Minnesota is currently trailing in this one, but I've seen crazier things in Minneapolis. Trust me when I tell you that. On this field and off it, this game is not over. It's a close one right now. They're trailing by one to Maryland. Just another week of college football where we've come to expect the unexpected, fellas. And how about that one? Kevin will be keeping an eye on everything going on elsewhere. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains. And when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. They get him on the ground at the 36 after a pickup of five. And I don't care if I get it by two, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just... I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Now on second down. Back to pass, it's Bazelak. Finds his big tight end. He's there to make the stop, but the damage has been done as they pick up the first down on the throwing catch. And that's why the bullet pass is so important. Right. Sometimes these defenses, they don't give you big windows to throw into, and you want to take that chance, but you cannot lob that football down the field and get it in there. Nice use of the bullet pass, my friend. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. He got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Running behind that left side. He picks up four. That'll leave them with third and six. And this offense is desperate to keep this drive alive. Trailing by multiple possessions, and it's getting late. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Finds his target down the middle. And a big hit at the end, but it didn't stop him from getting the first down. Offense picking up steam, first and 10 from the 31. Easy. Hot, hot. Oh. He's looking to throw it. Got it in the middle, it's Tillman. 
I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field, too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when you start getting those long yardage situations. Awesome job up front by this defensive line. Being so good at the point of attack and eating blocks, eating some double teams that allows these linebackers to run free, unencumbered, and get to the football. And they'll miss the connection here on third down. It's fourth down, and they'll try the field goal. He'll try to put up the three ball from 43 yards away. And it's right down the boulevard. So they're lining up to kick it off after that last drive, put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut them down. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. Able to find enough room to get it out across the 25. He's brought down at the 26. Toledo has the ball. Here comes the offense. Gonna run it. It's Stewart. Defense fills those gaps. He's got one to the 28. He's more than the 28. Brings up second down. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Still on his feet at the 40. And how much running room have they been able to find on the ground? Man, are they piling up some gaudy rushing stats. I love that play call, and I love the timing of the pre-snap motion. Because the quarterback was able to get it to the receiver right behind the offensive line, because of the timing, he was able to outflank the defense. That puts him out in space where he's able to use his speed. Nice job with the pre-snap motion and timing. Really confident throw and catch there. Big kick up, and they have a first down. And the Rockets come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Jet sweep to the receiver. Across the 25, he's got room. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. Down to the 18-yard line, it's first and 10. Jet sweep to the edge. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Listen, the offense stars those plays where they want to get their playmakers the ball. And the defense understands it as well. I got to know, when that guy comes in motion, he's a legit threat. They did, and you could tell. They pulled the trigger and went and made a nice play. Early movement on the offense will push them back a bit. Ball start, Ball start offense. offense. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. Touch pass on the run. <laughs> Guys, that's the end of the quarter, and Toledo has the lead. And as we switch ends of the field, let's take a quick look at the national rankings. Just about ready to go in the fourth, and we'll see if any drama can be mustered. Back on the field after the break, and we'll start the quarter here on third down. Back to throw, it's Gleason. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free, and fourth down is coming up. Third and short in college football today, you see so much more pass than you used to. The offense stays aggressive, and I think they stay aggressive because they know they're in field goal range. They got that three in their back pocket. Got it. They already have a comfortable lead up by multiple possessions, but they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Snag in the middle, it's Torres. They make the stop at the five-yard line, and they've got it first and goal. There are a lot of offensive coordinators out there. A similar
Eckler situation with a lead like this, uh, they'd definitely be running the ball at this point. Uh, they'd probably take their starting quarterback out of the game potentially, but not this unit. They are still staying aggressive. They're still taking shots. They're just trying to light up the score. Touchdown, Rockets! And the route is on. They're on the board again, and it looks as if this winning streak is going to continue. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. They march 79 yards on the drive, and the score comes on a five-yard touchdown pass. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Bowling Green has it back, and they'll send the offense onto the field. Guys, that last trip a little disappointing having to take the three. And I think, Jesse, you see so many offenses talk about getting yards and the tempo and all the stuff they do. It was a nice job moving the football, but they got to get in the end zone this time. Yeah, and I think to do that, they just got to be more physical at the point of attack. Get some push up front. They need to be the best running team in this game to win. Makes the grab. It's Harris. They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. That last completion has them set up. Second and short. He's looking to throw. Release to the back. Grabbed over the middle. It's Patterson. Nice pick up there. Gets him the first down and sets him up at the 45-yard line. New set of downs after that completion. Coming out on first down with the play fade. Makes the grab over the middle. And how about that catch and run? So dangerous, this guy. The offense has struggled. They're not going to win this game. But trust me, this coaching staff is still trying to find things to build off of for next week. And after an explosive play like that, maybe they can generate just a little bit of momentum to gain a little bit of confidence that they can keep coaching up heading into their next game. And it's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. Looking to throw, it's Bazelak. Got his man in the middle. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. Using him out of the slot, he has just been unstoppable. And I love putting dynamic athletes in the slot that I can move around, that I can put in motion, that I can, I can make him go in or out. I can put him off the ball so you can't get hands on him, and they've really featured this guy today. Relying on that running game inside the red zone, he picked up three to the 11. Give to the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Yeah, this offense, man, they just continue to struggle. And just, they need to find something that they do really, really well. And running the football late in the fourth quarter when you're getting beat by a good bit, that's probably not it. This offense needs to hit the gas. They need to pitch and catch a little bit, throw the football. Might as well go big or go home. They need a touchdown, and it looks like they're on their way home anyway. They'll go for it on fourth down. Trying to get to it. And they get to him and sack the quarterback, and they'll stop the drive on down. He had nowhere to go with the football. You could tell, surveying the field, somebody's got to get open to go make a play. Man, throw it up. Run it, do something. You can't take a sack on fourth down. You've got to give somebody an opportunity to make a play for you. Kept it on the ground on first down. Now back to the line. They'll run it. They want to take their time here. He got a bunch and looks close to getting a lot more, but he's got the first down. Yeah, they've had a day. Yeah, and it's the complete and total offense. They, they got the ground going, and obviously this is why you see him. You, you're going to feature him because he can turn those legs, get those extra yards, but they've had balance throwing for touchdowns. Like, this offense has been very complete today, and that's why they're winning so big. Little touch pass to the receiver. You'll take four yards on first down every time, second and six. 
Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside, and David, it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion, so everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over it. That's why offenses love to run it. Just It makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get them out of a spot. Touch pass on the jet sweep. The Rockets pick up the first down. You think about when you hit those guys on the move, man. He's only flying so fast. And I got to adjust my angle as a DB and make sure I keep outside contained. And it's just a, it's a really easy play to run to get positive yards, especially in a situation like that when you're looking for the first down. Run that play, you get it. Nice, easy, easy. And the Rockets will snap it on first and ten. They'll leave it with the lone back. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Quick touch pass to the receiver. He's there to make the stop, and they threw it in reverse, losing yardage on that play. The first thing you have to do to make these plays successful offensively is I have to block the edge. I, I got to get my speedster in space. They didn't do a good job of getting that guy out there in space where he could really use his jets. Nice job by the defense understanding it, seeing it, rallying to it, and tackling that guy for a piece. Hey, man, sometimes you get the perfect play call at the perfect time. That time, the defense blitzing, offensive line allowed everybody to run upfield, and they slip in the running back screen, and behind it, there was nobody there to make a tackle. And this offense generates a massive play. And the defense down in this game, they just can't do anything to stop this offense at this point, Dave. Right now, they know they're going to be trying to run the football and try and ice the game, but there's nothing at this point that seems they can do. Yeah, and it's frustrating. I got to sell out, man. I got to bring as many guys to the line of scrimmage as I can. I got to find a way to get this ball back to my offense. The, the clock is not my friend, and them running the football is only going to run this thing out quicker. I got to find a way to make something happen, strip the football, do something. They'll call timeout with nine seconds left on the clock. And they've moved closer and closer, and still they need two yards, third and goal. Slams ahead. Touchdown, Toledo! And the stomping has commenced. The lead gets bigger here in the fourth quarter, and their run continues about to go 8 0. And you knew this one was over already, but how about an exclamation point to go with it? Another score for this offense. They've had themselves a great day, and the stats just continue to pile up. On to attempt to try. The kick is up and good, and put one more on the lead. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And finish the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. Oh, look at Mr. Hands taking the squibber inside the third. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. And here we go, final play of the game right here. They'll throw it on first down. He's going up top here late in the game. And it's caught inside the 20. You know what's great about rivalry games? Each side hates every wretched breath the other one sucks into their greedy lungs. Figuratively speaking, of course, and when you win, oh, 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 is that sweet. It's glorious. To, to be able to brag, to be able to text message your buddies, to be able to post stuff on social media, it's a lot of fun. I think fans like it more than anybody, but it's something that you every year you have a couple games start. This was one of them, Jesse. They took care of business, and now you move on to the next. They really did. We saw some great individual efforts in this game by the winning team, too. So cool to see some of these players that have had terrific collegiate careers make some of the biggest plays of their lives in this game, in a rivalry game that just means so much. This was a fun one.